Hi again, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. It's six o'clock now, so rock and roll. We're doing two back-to-back -back long videos. Last one is shading. Let's talk about fills this time. hoo Intro music. <laughs> All right, now that's over with fills. So this all comes off of a query um, from a Facebook group where people who are beginning to tattoo are asking questions. Oh, that's a good coffee. So we figured we'd try to break this down in a little bit longer format one. So hopefully it's gonna let you know a couple ways to try and approach each one of these uh, aspects of tattooing and maybe give you a couple hacks to make it better. So fills everyone says that you gotta fill in that tattoo what is a fill this is, yeah i know this is going to be some road stuff so fills are based on concentration concentrations well i got really small right what is the concentration of pigment when it comes to substrate like skin or fake skin what we're going to see if we get a little magnifying glass Maybe bigger than that, maybe a microscope. What we're gonna see as we're working with our substrates, we're making a whole bunch of little needle marks, right? They're depositing pigment into that substrate. The concentration is how many of those small dots are aggregated to a specific space, right? And high quantities, we're gonna have a much deeper saturation, which means there's gonna be more pigment in the area. And lighter concentrations are gonna have fewer dots, right? Cause that's all we're doing. We're using a needle, right? Do, do, do. We'll just go back to our little round here. And we're going into the skin and we're depositing a whole bunch of little pigments into that skin. That's what makes the tattoo, right? So concentration realistically is, is our fill, right? How solid or how much concentration or how many needle holes have deposited pigment into that space. So when we're thinking about concentrations, we're gonna have a gradient. That's always fun, right? From one side, which is gonna be less, over to the other side, which is gonna be more. This will be your shades. This is your full fill, right? More concentration, the more pigments in there, the more solid it's gonna look. So when we're trying to think about filling in a tattoo, what we're trying to do is create as many dots as possible in an area to put a bunch of pigment into the skin, fake skin that you're trying to do without destroying it, right? Especially for single pass work. That's, that's, that's it. That's what a fill is. <clears throat> I took notes this time, so I always think that's kind of fun. Um, yeah, so if we're trying to do something where, let's say this is just gonna be, you know, full color, which is gonna be moving into a shade. Realistically, what we're gonna see is, what we should see, is a consistency within each one of those gradients. Let's make a whole bunch of dots here. A consistency between the amount of dots of pigment that we're gonna have slowly migrating into less. Right, so we can think about, we use a bunch of math with this, like stitch rate over like the area that you're working with and the fluid viscosity coming out of the pigments. We don't need to get too much into that unless you want to uh, know about it, which let me know in the comments, I guess. We can always do a video that gets in like the super high end tech of this. Um, but like that's, that's literally it, right? So if, if we're trying to <clears throat> fill a tattoo, which I keep looking back at that picture that, that we got up, some of the things I see inside there is this, right? If we have a leaf, the leaf has been lined and we've got the saturation of color. It looks like it's pretty solid on one spot. Some black lines for some veins or something coming out the other side here. And then what looks like some really peppered work it's not fully saturated here, butting up next to it with like an even gap, right? Where we can see like the space where the color is saturated on one of these leaves is just, it's, it's solid, it's in there. And it's totally even all the way across. This is gonna show me, you can look back at the other 
video there. Then we've got some tight circles, which I don't agree with. Tight circles fill. <clears throat> Coming along the side, and then somebody tried to do a fan shading or wand motion. We've got a wand shade pattern here where they're trying to flick back and forth very gently <coughs> to create gradation, right, between something that has a whole lot of dots in it to make it appear like these two spots are going to be joined together. But because it's like there's like an easily identifiable gap along this. What we're gonna see is where that concentration where they're doing tight circle fill is pretty consistent. And then right next to it is just very even spacing of little pigment holes that are not really committed. There's no, there's no gradation between the space where we're gonna see uh, more shade on one side but less you know, fill on the other. So how <coughs> how do we start a, a approaching this to fix it? Well, first off, if I've got a really well saturated edge here, especially in something like fake skin, and we're trying to blend it back against something else, and rather than trying to just like butt two things together, right? Which we're just trying to butt these two together. Man, my kid really broke that one. <coughs> I'm gonna start doing our overlap. If I overlap on top of this, and I overlap on top of this coming out there. What I'm doing is I'm fully saturating this area and I'm going to be fully saturating the color of the other area. I'm not trying to, to create a wash, right? If we're doing full color, if we're trying to fill, realistically, we're trying to create a space with two different colors, tones, tints, whatever we're gonna be doing, right? Where they are evenly aggregated on top of each other, the same amount of holes, and then they're blending together, right? So rather than trying to shade and do all this fanny, fancy fanning stuff, which I mean, I made a short video about like the only time I ever use a wand shade is to just try and blend two bits together. And it's usually when I'm doing black and gray and I get like a couple lines from the mag, <clears throat> skipping across the skin, making my hand wasn't like perfectly straight or not. Rather than this, all I'm going to do is just that two-third overlap. You get your green, dark green or whatever, your other green, and you just like literally just like pile on top of it, like commit it to the thing. Looking at the picture, we already know that there is some good saturation that's there, even if it was done with tight circles, which isn't really right. <coughs> but this, just like literally like come in, scoop that stuff in, you get your second color, one-third overlap, Keep your hands going the same way. Now, this is something I don't. I see a lot of people, especially apprentices, do. That's it's irksome. When you're going to do a fill, people will start with a color, their overlap, and it's moving one way, right? And then what they'll try to do is come in with another color that they're trying to butt up with, and they start going another way to try and blend. Now, you can do this <clears throat> to create some really neat effects, especially in skin or on fake skin, if they're intentional, right? But if you're trying to create like a nice smooth gradation, <clears throat> you want your needles moving in the same manner, same fashion, right? Because what are we doing? If we blow it up, we're seeing a bunch of dots being made that are going in a certain line, right? Now, if they're all going in a certain line because that's the way that our hand has been moving, and we try to overlap and create a new line or mix on top of it, if they're all moving the same way, that's great. They tend to blend really easily and look consistent and, you know, like it's meaningful. Now, if we're doing this the other way where we have some of our dots because our needle is just coming up and down, right, and poking into that substrate, it's going in one direction, but our other one is going to be coming through and trying to blend with it another way, we're not going to end up having the same effect with the blend. It's pretty simple, right? You don't really have to break that one down. I mean, just try it if you're out there. If you have one motion that you're gonna be going through and you're filling something like a leaf, fill that leaf that whole way with that same motion. Unless you're trying to create some type of bevel effect or something, right, which you'll have ones that are gonna be coming this way, ones that are gonna be coming this way, and maybe some of the shading coming off this is gonna be moving opposite, which create like different, like uh, 
junction points where the pigment's going to be meeting up and creating maybe a little bit more of a saturation in certain spots. So you can make it look like it's a little bit more full or higher, maybe a little bit deeper depending on how deep the tone is. Which I mean, if you want to learn a little bit more about how light affects things, go see the ANI Ani Art Academy. They've got free tutorials. It's like 500 pages long that teaches you some of the most basic stuff about how to approach uh, creating designs and understanding how our brain interprets light. Thank you, Anthony Wychulis, for being such a great dude. Um, anyways, <coughs> this is going to be the one of the easiest ways to like make your fill work. Make sure the needle is going to be going in the same way, and and commit the stuff that you're doing to skin. Right? Like, don't try to be wishy-washy about it and use a bunch of different techniques because what you're going to end up having is a tattoo, a spot that's supposed to look filled, is going to look like it's shaded and filled and blended and there's not going to be any consistency with it. We want to have a good aggregation of all the pigments overlaid on top of each other that creates the illusion of something being there, right? <coughs> Sorry, I'm still under the weather. Let's have another sip of coffee. Uh, all right. The other thing we need to do with this is like realistically, if we're going to be using multiple colors inside of a, a space, inside of a fill, something that needs to be done that has a lot of variations. It's not just gonna be a simple solid green. And let's say we want a gradation between a solid fill of black into green into light green. Then we're gonna to have to set up these transitions as well with our ink caps, right? If we already know that we've got black and we've got green and we've got light green, we're also gonna need our transitional caps in between those, right? We know that we have three colors going in. We're going to need at least five ink caps with our colors dispersed in them to be able to make those transitions appear more natural, right? <clears throat> with these ones, we're going to have our solid color of black, of green, and of light green. And then in between them, we're going to have our tints where we're going to fill this one up three quarters with green. And this one, three quarters up with light green. And if we have a needle bar, on the back of the needle bar, you're gonna see a loop. You can take your loop and you dip it in one, and then you dip it in the other, and give it a spin. What that's gonna do is this is gonna make a dark green, right? If we're tinting with black, you can use other colors as well to try and create that. You can, it's just like painting, right? And then same with like our, our green and our light green, we're gonna wanna end up with a mid green, right? So we're gonna take our light green that's been in here. We're gonna take our eye loop, make sure you get a new one clean or clean it before it oh, also works. We're gonna dip in here, we're gonna mix in there, and then we're gonna twist it. Whoop. When we keep dipping back and forth between these two, we're gonna slowly be building up that light green to look darker, bridging that gap between these two, right? So now we have five colors. We have black, dark green, green, mid green, and light green. When we go to do our fill, all we have to do is identify the spots that we need inside of that design, right? That need those colors. Let's just go right back to our little one here. We have our leaf and we have our, our stencil on. We've got our lines and stuff. We know light source wise, boop, 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 boop. Our light source is shining down this way. Our dark edge is gonna be over here, right? So this is gonna be our dark green. Our outline is gonna be our black. And then what we're gonna start doing is seeing, right? Is this gonna be dark green or black? Well, it we can do either, either. We'll say that it's black. We know our residual around it is gonna be dark green as well, right? Do, 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 do. Our high spots where the light is gonna be is gonna be here and there. Let's make this a different color. It might be a little bit easier to see instead of just using fucking green for everything, right? Our high spots are gonna be in these spots where we know light is gonna be hitting them. And finally, our mid green is gonna be anywhere between those, right? So now all we're doing is paint by number. You're gonna do your solid fill. Uh, if you feel comfortable just doing the tight circles while you're trying this out before you start trying uh, uh, like the box or shovel method with this stuff, please go ahead and do it. <clears throat> but start with your colors and literally just color in those spaces where your boundary lines are and then go over one third of the distance that's there. 
So if we have all of this, it's gonna be that dark green. We're gonna start in there with that dark green and we're gonna fill it in. And then we're just gonna like flick out a little bit. Right, like we had said in the other video, to create a bit of a shade a gradation where we're gonna be coming off this, right? We have a whole bunch of dots here and we move quicker flicking out. We're gonna have fewer dots where that transition is. Now we get to our next color. We're gonna be going our mid green. Our mid green is gonna go over that overlap. <coughs> Sorry, where we flicked over. And it's gonna start filling in there, solid, right? Two things are gonna happen. One, you're gonna have that really nice transition because we have our tinted colors going off this, but two, the color that's already in the skin or your fake skin is gonna start to mix, right? If we got our substrate here and this is all solid coming across and then it starts to lighten up because our dots are not so much. As soon as we take our next color and we overlay it on top, what's gonna happen? It's going to mix with what's in there and it will change the tone and color, and then we'll start fanning off again, right? Simple, literally paint by numbers. Once you get all that done, if you wanna throw highlights in, go ahead and do it. You just lay it over top of whatever else is there. Simple. All right, one more thing. When we start getting into all of this stuff, I know it can be really complex, but tattooing doesn't have to be complex, right? It's just like being a plumber. I don't know, a framer, something like that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a way to do this with everything. So like most of this stuff is gonna be pretty easy to apply to a fake skin model because you can sit there and beat the living heck out of it, you know, and it won't matter because it's not human. You don't have to worry about scarring or, you know, too much trauma inducing additional pigment loss after the thing has been done. You know, three, four months down the road, it just looks like, you know, janky garbage. Um, but it's a good way just to like, if, if you're doing this, yeah, it's like maybe we should make a video about like reading skin. I don't know, we'll do that later. Um, <clears throat> when you're doing this, it's, it's fun to just like try this out, right? Like try, try creating a paint by numbers, like a Lisa Frank fuzzy poster type thing, right? See how this stuff is going and, and just see how you can start creating your blends. Because when we're doing this and we're trying to do it with intention, we're not trying to go in to create something that we can sell. This is literally training, right? We're trying to train these techniques that we're doing so our eyes start to understand what's working and what doesn't work. And then we're separating that idea of being an artist to just being a technician. We're trying to apply it. So when you're going in to do these things, try it on fake skin. You know, if you start to move because you know, your apprenticeship is moving that way, where you can actually start to get into, you know, testing this on, on humans, do it bit by bit, just little bits at a time. If you're going to try one thing, maybe you've got some practice skins or something at home, start out with one of these things, lay in your line work and like literally grab a hectograph pen, marker, Sharpie marker, something like that, and start laying out your dots. Go in and just do a paint by number. See how it works. If it doesn't feel very comfortable, you don't like all that setup, maybe you just want to try to wing it, wing it. Have some fun with this stuff. Use your ink caps as your guide and just practice the blends. You don't even have to do shapes. I, I find it really frustrating with a lot of people when I see them practicing their tattooing that they're always trying to create an image rather than just practice the technique, right? Because more often than not, especially when you're learning to tattoo, you're punching way above your weight class. You know, like you shouldn't even be trying to do your own artwork for like the first two to three years. You should just be copying what is already known to be good. And that way you're focusing on technique rather than trying to be creative because it's cart before the horse thing, right? If you start to create a bunch of elaborate designs, but you don't know if it will work in skin, you're just wasting someone's time, money, and you know, their autonomy by creating something and putting it on them for the rest of their life that just doesn't work. But if you know how the skin reacts and you can understand how the uh, different substrates, maybe we'll say, we'll say skin and fake skin, and you understand how things may age or how different pigments blend, right, specifically, like maybe, and there is sometimes you're gonna do this where black isn't gonna work as a tint, you know? You're gonna have to use other colors. And then when they mix with different like brands inside the skin, or if there's different, you know, pigment bases that are gonna be mixed, it has a different effect. You know, 
understanding those things will make it so that when you actually start to design tattoos down the road they'll be able to like be strong you know effective tattoos that people are going to be willing to pay money for if you're just learning focus on technique focus on being safe first right which is like the first year of tattooing this is what it used to be like you come in you learn shop lingo you learn critical thingy thinking <clears throat> and you learn how to not kill people by being disgusting right after you get those things down, then you start getting into basic technique. This is why most of these apprenticeships would be somewhere between four and seven years, but nowadays, six months, easy and you're out, which is a little bit scary. <coughs> so yeah, anyways, this is my rant for the day, I guess. I have been up since three o'clock and got to bed at one, which is, you know, rock and roll, lots of coffee today. Um, but this is it, right? So hit me up in the comments, something like that. If, if something didn't make sense, we can always try to expand on this a little bit, but try to make sure that like when you're going to do your fills, it's not some type of crazy thing where you're having to mix a bunch of different techniques together to get the desired outcome. If you're just doing some traditional work, solid color work, if you're trying to do you know, new school stuff or highly illustrative stuff, even if you're trying to do your like photorealism or hyperrealism, all of this is gonna come down to understanding how those dots are interacting and how to blend. And more often than not, as long as you have your tints down correctly, you're gonna be able to do it. That's it for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing signing off.